Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about the Fallout 1 and 2 box covers. And yes, I'm calling Fallout Fallout 1, just so I don't say I'm talking about the Fallout box covers, and then everyone will get confused. Now, I've mentioned this here and there. I know I talked about it on the Why I Left Fallout 2 video. I think it came up in chats with Leonard, so I'll link those below if you want even more context. But I wanted to pull them out, pull out that discussion and make one particular video about it. And I wanted to call it out because otherwise, this is the kind of thing I think gets lost in development, um, development history. These are the kind of things that there's just a few people who even know this. Like nobody at Bethesda knows about this. A lot of people on the Fallout team either don't weren't involved in this and don't know it or they knew it but they heard it third hand and they've probably forgotten it or they forget the details you know and like, like luckily i take a lot of notes unfortunately there are some things missing and i'll get to that but i wanted to call it out because this is the kind of thing that when people are talking about the history of fallout it just gets lost and misunderstood and it's not like the people involved aren't still around so i'm like well okay i will talk about it and then peg it and get it up on on YouTube and people can refer to it if they want to. But so in the midst of time, <laughs> back in like 95 or so, we developed the development of, of um, Fallout had been going for about two years and marketing had hired a external company, advertising company to do things like come up with a the Fallout logo, the type font to use, the and the box cover, things like that. We, when we got them, I remember just going, huh. It was kind of plain. It was like it there's nothing about Fallout. It was it was it was a generic box box cover that could have been used in any post apocalyptic game. I wish I remember the name of the studio. I literally don't remember the name of the advertising company. Um, but we got it and we're like, eh, I don't really like this. This isn't very good. So Leonard's like, I'm going to make a new one. And just so you know, he looked back at some of the previous work they had done and he really kind of liked the logo, just not how it was used on the cover. So he made this. And by the way, this is what we shipped with. Now, marketing didn't like this. And I remember a meeting with someone. I'm not going to name them because you guys just... There are some of you that once I name someone, you seem to use that as like a shaming thing. I know who it was. I remember who I met. We had a one-on-one -on -one and he basically said, hey, love what Leon did. We're not going to use it. And I was like, but why? He had a whole host of reasons. But the one I remember the most was he kept talking about how important it was to have a face on the box. And I was like, it does have a face. It's the guy in power armor. It's a very unique, iconic. No, you've got to be able to see the face. The face has to be visible. Now, bear in mind, there was no visible face on the box that the advertising company did. And I pointed it out and he was like, well, there are rules. The whole time he was talking, I wasn't looking at him. I was kind of like this, staring at something on a shelf over his shoulder behind his desk. He finally turned and looked at it. It was the box for the number one best-selling interplay game in 1995, Descent. Do you notice something about this cover? There's no face on it. He had literally spent 10 minutes talking about how important it was to put a face on it. And so there's no way he could approve of what Leonard did. And the number one selling game, as we spoke, was that. And I was just like, I don't understand. And I remember that was the first, but not the last time, somebody said, look, sometimes the exception proves the rule. This would come back in Fallout 2 when the original Fallout 2 team was doing a design that I thought was a little tropey. And one of them said, yeah, but sometimes cliches work. Sometimes, you know, the exception proves the rule. And I'm like, ugh. So, push comes to shove. You know, I don't really have a dog in this hunt. 
I'm colorblind. I don't have a good artistic sense. I didn't like what the advertising company made. I did like Leonard's, but Leonard felt very strongly about it. And I said, okay, we're going to go to task on this to the point where I didn't sign the approval for the advertising stuff. I think I told you at one point there was a room that only producers were allowed to go into and, and higher level people and to sign off on things. And I wouldn't sign off on this. Um, I did put Leonard's into the mix and I signed off on it. And so did it for other people. So it became the Fallout box cover. So fast forward two years, more than two years. We're doing Fallout 2 after agreeing I wasn't going to do it. I'm now in charge of it. Leonard and Jason are doing, you know, handling almost all the art, you know, or they're, they're the leads, uh, art lead, lead artist and technical uh, lead artist. And Leonard had a great idea for a cover, which not only resembled the Fallout 1 box, but was a tie-in to the fact that it was going to start in a tribal area because the original Fallout player was the grandfather of whoever you were playing. And it was this. I thought this was great. This was going to be a great cover. Dog. Now, just so you know, I'm going to give a special thanks to Reddit user Foxtrot Niner who recovered this and cleaned it up. This is now a load screen in Fallout 2. They obviously did not use it. When I went to a meeting, I discovered this was the new cover for Fallout 2. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. I wanted I wanted this thing that our artists put together. And I was told no. Just no. And I said, well, what about the face? I was told a visible face was really important. And ours has that. And yours doesn't. No, I don't know what you're talking about. It was a new person. This was a new person. It was a person I talked to in 95. It was a brand new person. She had no idea what I was talking about. She'd never heard of that role. But she goes, this has been decided. We're done. We don't have to talk about this. And then, like I said, this is all news to me. Um, and yes, people like to focus on one or two of the reasons. I had lots of reasons I left Fallout 2. This was one of them. It was weird to sit down in a meeting with people who had nothing to do with Fallout 1 and to find out they had already made pretty important decisions about Fallout 2 that they didn't include me in the decision-making process. They didn't think it was important to include me in the decision-making process. I didn't like their decisions. They didn't care. And they were just going to go, we're going to override you. And that's when I was like, no. I'm not... I did not just crunch for the last year and I'm crunching for this year to have this stuff going on. So I basically said, this is not happening. And she told me, yeah, it is. And well, guess what? I ended up leaving and you guys got the Fallout 2 box cover that they wanted. Yay. Um, but one thing I wanted to say too is, first of all, I really think the original one that Leonard did would have been better. But I just want to tell you, it's not that I felt super strongly about this, even though I did like Leonard's better and I thought it had that face that I was told was so important. But when you become a game director, that means you have to fight some fights that aren't necessarily yours. It's someone on your team feels strongly. You support them. You agree with them, even though you don't think it's a big fight to fight. You fight because you're the game director and it's your job to go to the map for one of your team, somebody on your team. You may not want to, and you may go, I don't want to do this. You may feel like I'm going to send you in there. That's not their job. It's your job. When you become a game director, you get a lot of power. And I thought some of the power was me going, this is what the box cover is going to be. But you also get a lot of responsibility. And that responsibility means you fight some fights that you don't want to fight and you don't even feel that strongly. I'm a colorblind programmer. I don't have much of a dog in this hunt about how, what things look like. But I fought that fight because it was important to the team. Years later, I still think the Barbarian cover would have been a lot better. I'm glad it's a load screen in Fallout 2. I'm glad it got used. But in the end, um, the new image was used. Now, apparently there were other reasons too to go with the new one, which is they changed the box shape 
And I'm not sure the new one had a flap or not, but they changed the shape of it. The old Fallout 1 box was more horizontal and the new one was vertical because that's apparently how shelving worked in game stores. Now, we trivially could have changed it. I believe Leonard said, I can change that. I can change that right now. These are just digital images. But no, they had already decided. So it was a weird, it was a weird thing for them to double down on. And it also was kind of like a, a bit of, this is the shape of things to come. I'm going to have lots of stupid arguments with people who had nothing to do with creating this stuff, but suddenly want to be a big part of it. And that was, the, you know, the writing was on the wall. By the way, if you ever make an IP, unless you own it, you are going to lose control of it. So just eventually brace yourself to being overridden on everything. So that's not what I really want to talk about. What I wanted to say was, hey, we did a great box cover for Fallout 1. I also think we made a great box cover for Fallout 2. It's not what you got, but at least you can see that loading screen. Anyway, I hope you like this story of Fallout 1 and 2 box covers.